welcome to Fantasy Hotline where we talk about your wildest fantasies Elves, dragons, chosen ones, vampires, mice and more We're your hosts Chris and Claire <laughs> well, welcome. Terrible. Okay. <laughs> she kind of hits those S's a little hard. Yeah. Yeah. All the I downloaded all the voices and they all sound terrible. Yeah. Except for Siri, so I have to go back to Siri. That's so funny. So that that that's the intro normally we do with her voices, but mm-hmm. Claire, is it, you want to tell them what? It's yeah. Like? Next tomorrow I'm getting um, nodes. Yes, like the Pitch Perfect movie, Mm -hmm. nodes removed from my vocal cords and I won't be able to talk for two weeks. And my doctor told me to download that app, which as we can all tell, will, you know, make my recovery completely seamless and no one will think that's weird at all. It's going to go well. I, well, sure. I've been testing. I've been testing out some phrases. So let's just let's just hear this one, which is personally my favorite. Hello, sir. I whoops. I slipped on my huge pussy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if you know me, I'm saying that all the time. It's yeah, hanging she, out down there. She, whoops. I slipped on. <laughs> oh, it's so silly. God, I cannot get literally cannot get it to go back to normal normal voice. Oh yeah, this she's so going to be bad. Australian or an Australian <laughs> robot for two weeks. It's my it's my future. Um, okay, so we are chugging through our list, and today we're talking about moss. M- m- oh my god, moss flower. M- moss flower by m- Brian Jacks. Jacques. Ja- yeah, <laughs> Jacks. I, I don't know how it's pronounced. They did. I listened to the book on. I listened to the book on tape. Nice. Which was the most uh, scouse thing I've listened to in quite some time. Scouse. It was. It was. It was made in Merseyside, England, which mm. is where Liverpool is. Okay, amazing. I <laughs> so love that. So everyone had the heaviest scouse accents. So what is scouse? That's like what you call a person from Liverpool. Oh, or like a scouse. A scouser. It sounds yeah. like bad. <laughs> it does kind of, but they're they're proud of it. I'm happy for them. And so Brian Jocks it, uh, narrated the whole thing. Mm. Uh, with that's really sweet. With his son played Martin the Warrior. Oh my God! And he's got the strongest Liverpool accent I've ever heard in my entire. He's like, I'm Martin the Warrior. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> that's like, amazing. No, ah, Burr the Fighter. Like, <laughs> oh my God. good to see you. <laughs> You're watching the Everton game. I have this to. Weekend. I have to delete all my notes because they've radically changed based on just hearing you say that. That's how he's like Martin the Warrior. And this is my friend Gump. Gump. <laughs> Gump, Prince of Thieves. I do love Gump. Oh yeah, what that's a, a great name. Naming my son Gump. Gump. <laughs> <laughs> Set him up for a life of success. That's a good one. I think it'll good. work out for him. It'll be good. My name's Gump Austin Smith. <laughs> Gump Austin. Yeah, it can't really get weirder when the last name is Austin Smith. <laughs> it's pretty, you know. It's pretty good, mate. It's pretty British, actually. I feel like Brit- people oh, in England have like three last names these days. It's so British. Well, all of my favorite soccer players have two last names. It's because they're feminist. Just Trent. Alexander Arnold. I, that was a lie because that's like three first names. That's so true too. <laughs> okay, here's another one. Alex Oxalade Chamberlain. Okay, now that's his like ancestor was a lord. Yeah, Oxalade Chamberlain. Yeah, that's like yeah. I. What is their crest? Mm, probably two. <laughs> two. Yeah, two crests. Mm-hmm. Well, my an Oxalade and a Chamberlain. <laughs> yeah, with Chamberlain, like that word gets thrown around a lot in fantasy novels. Mm-hmm. I feel like I've known what a Chamberlain was since I was twelve. Yet could not tell you actually what it was. It's I just the knew man the word. who takes care of the castle. <laughs> he lands the chamber. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's the chamberlain. Oh chamberlain. my god. Okay, fucking mental breakthrough right now. The word chambers, and I didn't even. Wow. I think I'm a byproduct of fantasy novels. Is that you're like, yeah, I could talk to any peasant <laughs> from yeah. any era if it just threw a. Ch- I can't. I was gonna say if it just threw up in front of me. Yeah. If, if, if got, you just ran into one, kind of. Yeah. Or if you got like time traveled, you're mm-hmm. like, yeah, I need to speak to the master at arms, please. They'd be like, oh my god, of this course. this child of the mushroom <laughs> cut knows so much. You're from here, aren't you? <laughs> and I'm like, yes. <laughs> yes, not the future at all. Not the future at all. <laughs> Do you have any soda? <laughs> it wouldn't work for Moss Flower Universe. No. We'd be the only people. Yeah, we'd get killed. Yeah, they'd be like, we'd be attacked by badgers. <laughs> well, so Brian Jocks, this is um, he's 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 written like what sixteen. If novels? you don't know Brian Jocks, get the hell turn yeah. off like, your computer and break it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, break, <laughs> snap your laptop in half over and your knee. Go to the freaking library mm-hmm. and rent some books and read about some fucking badass otters and mice and mm-hmm. evil cats and and foxes and weasels. It's, yes. It's a weird, it's a weird book. It's a weird, well, it's like, is it fantasy because it has talking animals, be, and, but like, 
Yeah. I think that's, and I mean, there's also swords, obviously. There's swords, and I think it's fantasy in the sense where it's like mice and all that just replace people. Mm -hmm. And then there's like swans and crabs and Mm -hmm. and like eels, and which are completely like just everyday animals for us but Mm -hmm. for them a swan was like a dragon yeah yeah that's so true and like a crab was like a huge troll or like the Mm -hmm. they got kidnapped by frogs at one point which are like totally like Like orcs orcs. goblins yeah you're so right yeah god you're so freaking smart man (laughs) um it's just a good it's just a big analogy yeah yeah. Yeah. and and it's really funny because you're like yes it's clear this is so obvious (laughs) i've never (laughs) once thought about it that way don't worry it was a realization i just had okay amazing yeah it was wasn't like a, it wasn't like a, when I was reading it as a child. I was like, of course. <laughs> as an adult just now, I was like. <gasps> it makes sense. They all fit. So yeah. Mosslower is kind of like a, a lot of these books have crossover characters. And mm-hmm. Redwall was the first one. Mm-hmm. And Mosslower is the prequel to Redwall featuring the main character of Martin the Warrior, who mm-hmm. is a warrior mouse. Mm-hmm. And essentially in Brian Jock's world, mice and sort of like herbivore mm-hmm. animals like Badgers, moles, squirrels, otters, hedgehogs. Although otters aren't, or they eat fish. Yeah, they eat fish. Everyone yeah. eats fish. Yeah, fish are seen as a big old fuck you to fish. You can eat. Book. Yeah, they're not sentient. You can Mm-mm. eat them. Mm-mm. They're all good. And then if you're a stoat, weasel, rat, pine martin, uh, fox, mink, yeah. even um, wildcat. It seems that reptiles kind of get thrown into the bad mm-hmm. guy group. Yeah, you're you're. It's like very puritanical. You're born good or bad, essentially. Mm-hmm. And then birds are kind of this like neutral. Yeah, they can go either way. Yeah, they can eat you or they can like fly you to like you know whatever your destiny is. Or be like a spy that you can bribe with candied chestnuts. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. The currency is candied chestnuts. Mm-hmm. So it's yeah, basically it's just the ever, the everlasting struggle of good and evil between those mm-hmm. two factions of. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When did you first read a Red Wall book? I I mean, I think it was like right at, right at it was like probably in like late elementary school, mm-hmm. middle mm-hmm. school time. I mean, looking back at it, I was like, this is not like the easiest read. Like, no, it's also really violent. Mm-hmm. Like, I didn't remember it. I mean, it's, it's not like blood and guts, but you no. know, people are dying left and right. And threatening the hell out of each other. Yeah. And yeah. people are going crazy and like pinning cloaks onto each other and death. Mm-hmm. And like, if it was humans, it would not be as PG as it seems. No. Yeah. Well, okay. So Chris and I are doing this thing. We're each going to tell each other the summary of the book. Yeah. <laughs> we don't know what it is, what uh-huh. the other person is. So um, do you want to kick it off? Sure. Okay. Um, uh, all right. We're just kind of, I'm, I'm just, I'm just going to, I'm, I'm top of the head here. Um, so Brian Jocks, the the David Attenborough of backyard animals. Um, <laughs> that's the only thing I wrote down. That's incredible. Um, it, uh, leads you on a journey <laughs> of a kingdom that uh, in up, in upheaval that's uh, inherited by the evil Sarmina, uh, who declares herself dictator over several areas that she her father previously ruled, but with some level of goodness. And all hell breaks loose. <laughs> and in her domination, um, right at this time, a character named Martin the Warrior shows up and is tasked by Bella the Badger to uh, go get her father to help free them from the evil wildcat Sarmina. And from there, hijinks ensue. <laughs> <laughs> That's how all summaries will end. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay. Stoically hot, this is mine, stoically hot, m- mysterious mouse warrior stumbles upon <laughs> community of oppressed woodland animals escaping from their evil wildcat overlord, which is going through a Game of Thrones style family inheritance shakeup, courtesy of Sarmina, the evil wildcat. Mm-hmm. Will Martin the warrior help save the woodland animals? Will Sarmina truly lose her mind? Will the robin eat so many candy chestnuts he explodes will the eagle eat the pine mark yeah will he, and, yeah the plot l plot is basically will this one bird eat this one guy yeah. <laughs> so my you know and then of course good prevails and we get to meet lots of different creatures along the way it's, it's classic brian jock it's mm-hmm. like you get a scope of the land you meet like 18 different species mm-hmm. um there's a quick quest there's quite yeah there's a quest they solve a riddle in 15 seconds there's songs there's deep root and tater and turtle wait Turnip and tater and beetroot pie. I started yeah. the word backwards. Oh, there's just 
cool descriptions of food yeah. throughout. He make he kind of puts George R. R. Martin to shame with his ability to like mm-hmm. make things sound really tasty. At one point, oh there's like yeah. he came out with all this and mint water, and I was like, these dudes really know how to take care of themselves. I know they never hold back on a meal. They're like regular water, <laughs> no, <laughs> you no, fool, no, no. mint. We're gonna infuse mint, some shit. baby. Yeah. yeah, they're infusing stuff all the time. Everyone's talking about food. There's one point where it's like two weasels just going back and forth about their two favorite meals. Mm-hmm. They're like, what about this with the beer? He's like, what about this with a little cider? And they're like, like, oh, what about cider and the beer? Yeah, and he's like, stop it. You're making me hungry. <laughs> I think you should do a book. You should, that was good. I'll narrate this. So I think like, I mean, overall, we kind of know how Brian Jocks works. Good always prevails. Um, Martin the Warrior saves everybody mm-hmm. along the way, making new friends, questing to the Badger Mountain, mm-hmm. comes back with a big ship, mm-hmm. um, defeats Sarmina. Frees the imprisoned. Yeah, frees everyone who's imprisoned. Um, Gets a really cool sword. Oh my God, yeah. And then, um, oh shoot, I just forgot what I was going to say. Oh yeah, the Woodlanders kind of present troubling moral quandaries that they ignore sometimes and mm-hmm. sometimes don't. Oh, what do you mean? Well, like, okay, so I feel like the moral of the, I feel like Brian Jocks wrote this being like, I am writing about like morals and about how people should act, like be kind to the weak. And like, it's almost religious, you know, mm-hmm. like they let all the prisoners go at the end of the book. Mm-hmm. And they're like, don't come back. Yeah. And they're like, don't come back. And they're like, well, we know they're going to come back, but damn it, we're good. Yeah. Yeah. We can't just slaughter them in cold blood, which you're like, okay, fine. But they would do that to you. And then, I mean, maybe, should we go in order? Hmm. What do you think? Sure. Oh yeah. Okay. Why not? Okay. So, well, I guess we are kind of, I kind of already summarized it. Mm-hmm. I had a coffee. Can you tell my brain is going <laughs> too <laughs> fast? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's yes. Like Chip after some candied wall, candied <laughs> chestnuts. Yeah, so Chip is a bird who spies for them with the mm-hmm. fee of candied walnuts, which mm-hmm. I love. There's so many details in his like. There's everything's like accounted for. Yeah, kind of. Oh, it's just it's honestly it's just a downright cute book. Like especially yeah. after reading, we read Joe Abercrombie last oh episode. Oh my god! Yeah, and it was a nice fresh of breath, a breath of fresh air, but. And then at moments you'd be like, oh, candied chestnuts and all this stuff. And then out of nowhere he's like, and then the eagle's claws sank deep into the, mm-hmm. and they died in a mm-hmm. death clutch killing one another. Yes. And like, you're like, holy shit. He doesn't hold back. No. Well, okay, so what I was thinking about is there's, the foxes kind of occupy a nebulous part of the Brian Jacques universe because mm-hmm. sometimes they, they're like healers and they can help people mm-hmm. but usually they end up being like tricky and yeah. whatever and so this Fox Fortunata is kind of the right hand woman to Sarmina who's going slowly insane while she's mm-hmm. taking over her father's empire and they trick her into going out she goes out into the woods with an otter in disguise as mm-hmm. another fox mm-hmm. and they go to kind of like break into the woodlanders um like retreat essentially where they've all been hiding yeah and she doesn't realize it's a setup until the very end where they isolate her alone in the woods and they basically execute her (laughs) she hasn't even done i mean she's planning on like kidnapping some kids yeah she's she's not evil she's just with the evil side yeah yeah yeah, she's definitely stupid but then it's kind of funny for them to just be like yeah we won't be uh harming anyone and we're not gonna have an all-out fight and then also we're gonna execute this fox in the woods and no one will ever talk about it again yeah lady amber is a ruthless squirrel Oh my god, she's so cool. And she just, yeah, they lead her into a trap, and then all the squirrels like pop up from the trees and just, just absolutely pepper her with arrows. He loves the device of like Lady Amber's tail, like it's always going up and down, and he's always telling you about when it's going up and down. <laughs> We need to know about her tail. Yeah, because it's the signal to the squirrels to shoot the arrows, mm-hmm. which he clearly was like, came up with it. And he's like, this is amazing. Like, you gotta know every time that she signals, like I'm putting it in the book. Sometimes I had moments where I was just like, maybe Brian Jax is like, Jax is just like completely crazy. Like he's, like, <laughs> like he's out there watching his backyard and he's like, I know what's going on out there. Like <laughs> The truth. Or this is just what British animals are. You know what? I've, I've, uh, speaking, of, this is all I can say about British animals, which is one time my uncle, I'm half British, this is my British uncle, his yard got infested with moles. And so he bought these bombs. Um, you can buy these mole bombs in France that are not legal in England. And he like, went to France, he <laughs> straight up went to France and bought these like little bombs that you put in the mole tunnels and he exploded them all. Does he not know moles are clearly Scottish? Yeah, maybe that was why. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> oh yeah, the English one was going on. Uh, I just was like, okay, like I am feeling bad for the moles because I'm 14, but like, yeah, you do you, uncle. Did they blow up? Yeah, they don't have moles anymore. Very cool. Yeah, if, if they were kind of taken care of the English way, they would have been like drawn and quartered or something. Yeah, yeah. No, you would have just you gotten a couple of ferrets and then had them wage war there on each other. There we go. Other. Yeah, he should have armed the ferrets and in the, the yard. The enemy of my enemy <laughs> is my friend. Is British. <laughs> is a ferret. <laughs> <laughs> um. So, I think like I feel like we've both read so much Brian Jock that like I kind of want to know how you felt that Mossflower lived up to your memory of. Brian Jackson's world and his writing. It did. I, I, for, I mean, like, I, A, I was like, wow, I can't believe... A, either I was, like, just reading them and not understanding a thing mm-hmm. when I was little, but i pretty sure I remember really liking the books. So I was like, A, I didn't know I was freaking good at reading when I was little. <laughs> I know. I and, was like, I'm smart. And B, it just, yeah, totally brought the nostalgia back, and they were just as good. I think they're... I mean, they're a little under a, like what an adult should be reading totally (laughs) they're a little childish and like but but yeah they totally stuck with my expectations and above and beyond my expectations Mm -hmm. i thought they were just as good as when i was a kid what about you i felt the same way but there were a couple things that i thought were funny that maybe funny is the wrong word but a couple things that came out that i was like this is kind of weird but i think it's because i'm an adult like i didn't think about it all when i was a kid but martin just shows up he gets rescued from Coder, which is like the Sarmina's castle fortress yeah, yeah, yeah. with Gomp the mouse thief. Mm-hmm. And everyone is just like, hell yeah, Martin. Yeah, they're like, like, they're not like, oh my gosh, where are you from? Yeah, like, they're like, we've heard of you. And they just kind of accept him, which is, I guess in this world, it's like, okay, you know a mouse is good, so mm-hmm. you're gonna just accept another mouse. But it's kind of funny that no, no, there's no like, character development of the the characters are like show up on the page as they are like they don't really change or like i mean they change sort of in superficial ways but you you get like martin's inner thoughts a little bit but as a character he's pretty like in the present of the book oh yeah you know and it's like we don't know anything about his past Uh, no one else cares they're just like we love you matey like come on you're my best friend now yeah exactly yeah which i think is like okay it's a kid's book so like obviously i didn't care when i was like 12. there's some big there's some big kids book moments in that where they're like Mm -hmm. you can join our little quest we've always wanted a shrew who can wield a bat yeah exactly (laughs) lug-a-lug yeah (laughs) lug-a-lug what a great name it's really fun to say lug-a-lug-a-lug-a-lug i think and then also you know this is a persistent criticism that i have fielded from my friends about fantasy books in general Mm. but this one specifically again for kids but completely devoid of any sort of actual like love and romance none it's well, like Gomp is like Columbine's hot. Yeah, or wait, Gomp is is it? yeah, Gomp is like that mouse is my wife now. <laughs> and they're like Columbine, and, that's your husband. And Columbine's like, ooh, oh, Gomp. Like, yeah, she's <laughs> like, I then Jamie have Gomp full day. Yeah, yeah. I met him once for fifteen minutes. She's got like a quick, weird arc. They're just like, by the way, Columbine can shoot the hell out of an arrow. Oh yeah, who does she kill again? Does she kill? The... I, I, I can't remember. I can't remember either. But she. Is she went in practice? She like hits the target immediately. Oh yeah! Oh, and Lady yeah. Amber's like, "Good job, <laughs> tiny m- mouse, long-haired mouse, or whatever she." Is. <laughs> Does the mouse have long hair you in pick, your head? <laughs> yeah, just just like baby <laughs> hair, like a normal mouse, but with like, <laughs> but with like some like really nice hair. Everyone's like, "Wow, Columbine's a blonde." She's How got, did that happen? You got, like. Really <laughs> oh my god ew <laughs> you was you knew that was terrible to say oh, yeah. with, mm-hmm. she's got really nice oh, tits too good tits, that's exactly tell. what you said let you're me, looking too much at my horny water bottle sticker let me tell you friend oh that's what i'm doing right now i was looking for so i listened to the book on tape <laughs> and there are some amazing moments in which some of the characters so basically there's a bunch of uh plot where with a bunch of dialogue where they have the stoats and weasels oh, yelling, love, at, yes. yelling at each other. I and kind of, sorry, I want to interject really no, quickly. Keep going. Just to say that I, on reading this as an adult, I liked the villain segments almost more than the regular. Yeah, they were funny. They're so funny. Yeah. They just like go back. All right, can I, can yeah, I play, read it, can read I play, it, play one? It. Yeah, I won't be. Re- Do you think if I just held this up to the, the microphone, it would play? Yeah, okay. 
Back at Katia. I am getting ready to sleep in a dry bed too. No sign of the mice and the mole yet. Miss Scrooge. <coughs> it's getting so dark I can't see the own paws. Let alone mice and a mole. Come on, let's get clear of this forest while we can. If we reach the road, there's a dry ditch where we can camp tonight. Hey, Blacktooth, stop scoffing those rations. There'll be no left for us. Now, oh, there's plenty. Oh, my Anyhow, God. I'm starving. <laughs> you starving? I haven't had a bite since breakfast myself. Here, okay, give wait. me that food. No, I won't. Let go, you big grabber. <laughs> yeah. I'll take you. <laughs> this is exactly okay. Peter Jackson listened to this tape and then scripted the orcs yeah. carrying Mary and Pippin. Oh, and when the other orc wanted to eat them, this is like almost exactly the same They're orcs. Like, beat. They go back and forth. They're like, go deep. They're like, snark tooth, dumb ears. <laughs> like, like, it's like, I, I, it's so uncanny. I mean, I maybe not uncanny, but it's so funny how exact, it's almost exactly the same beat for beat. Like, mm-hmm. well, we want this food. No, you can't have it. Yeah. What well, about the halflings? Those yeah. are for the master. Yeah, yeah. Blah, 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 blah. And oh. it's like, but this is about like oat cakes and cider. Oh man. It's just so, it's just so funny. It's so funny. I, you, usually a book on tapes, one narrator, but Brian Jocks was like, no, we're getting a whole cast. Like, yeah. You're going to be in this. I tried to listen to another book from my childhood on tape and it was the, the voice cast was so bad. Like the main female character, she talked like this the whole time. Mm-hmm. And then she was going to get the sword. Wow. And I was like, okay, like I cannot handle, yeah, that's, cannot handle this. That's one thing that's limiting about re- like reading versus a book on mm-hmm. tape is the book on tape puts you in a box and it, it's, totally. it, 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 this is what the character sounds like now. And mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. when you're reading the book, you can do whatever you want. Like how did you, how did you picture Martin the Warrior talking? Like, just I, super fucking. It's hard to say because I feel like I I don't have like a sound for his voice in my head. Whenever I'm reading, it's just like I know it's different, mm-hmm. but like I couldn't say it. Mm-hmm. I guess I don't know. But it's funny because I I'm like of course they have British accents, but I've never really thought about them as having British accents. Mm-hmm. But they of course they do. In my mind, everyone in fantasy has a British accent. Like if you come at me with a fantasy novel and your mm-hmm. uh, and your and the narrator's American, I'm like. I'm almost out immediately. <laughs> you need the British I, element. I'm kind of like, no. It is a classic element of fantasy, but I I feel like it's limiting. Oh, yeah. But like not, in a, like not to shit on you. I'm no, just no. saying that British, for whatever reason, fantasy, well, not for whatever reason, white supremacy mm-hmm. and blah, blah, blah. No, well, yeah. And the majority of like the, I feel like the genre very much comes from Europe. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And Western Europe, and mm-hmm. sp- specific, b- specifically, it's both specifically. But there's, but that's just what the general fantasy. Yes, and there's that's what's been like uplifted in our lifetimes. Yeah, that's what's been shoved in our face mm-hmm, for sure. Mm-hmm. But uh, there's for sure fantasy from every corner of the yeah. earth, which is, yeah, I actually had a, got a recommendation. Ooh. I was talking about the pod with someone, and then gave me a recommendation of a like a Japanese fantasy novel. Ooh, cool. Yeah, which is kind of cool. I feel like a lot of Japanese like fantasy gets mm-hmm. thrown into like the anime. anime category. Yeah, but there's... But not all of it. Mm-mm, mm-mm. This Ooh, I'm is, excited. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm going to find that out later. Off-pod. That's an off-pod combo. Oh, an off-pod Do you guys combo. know we have off-pod combos? <laughs> Could you imagine if we didn't? <laughs> we only... T- I don't see Chris at all except for when we record and then we do not greet each other. Mm-hmm. We immediately start talking about the book. To the, to the microphones. Um, yes. <laughs> yes. And he has a sword, which is really weird. Um, we also have to talk about badgers. Badgers kind of have the only magic, it seems, in the world yeah. of Brian Jock. It's like I wrote down um, crazy badger woo-woo stuff. <laughs> well, yeah, they go to the Salamandaka or whatever. What? What, what's the Salamandaka? What's the Salaman, Salaman, Salamandastro? <laughs> no, I'm not going to tell you what it is, but you have to give me like two more guesses. Salamandastro. You're, you're close. Salamandastro. No, you keep saying the same one. Well, that's how I said it. <laughs> it's Salamandastron. Salamandastron? Yeah. But oh, in my well. head when I was growing up, I'd be like, Salamandastron. Like, <laughs> Salamandastron. I, I just took out a random A. How did you um, say uh, Sarmina's brother's name? Gingivere? Yeah, okay, cool. <laughs> that does was that like not, easy. Does that not seem like a kind of a girl name? Though? I mean, yeah. Brian Jacks was like, um, if you're an evil cat, you're actually good. If we, if I give you a cute name yeah. that I'd give to a normal cat 
Gingivir. You're going to name your kid Sarmina and then name the other one Gingivir? Like, which one's going to be evil? I know. Like, come on, man. What was going on in that family? It's like <laughs> all the stoats are named like Split Nose or Black Tooth. But if you name one like Andrew, it would be normal. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Andrew the Stoat Andrew, was actually a good guy. No one could have known because yeah. we didn't name him <laughs> Evil Eye. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, okay. I like I love when they go to the bathroom out and yeah. it's so cool. Yeah, they go and they meet um, Bor the fighter. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Bor is like crazy as hell. Yeah, he's kind of a mad wizard guy. And mm-hmm. how, what's his magic? What? Well, it feels like um, the caves in Salamandastron like have prophetic dreams, and he like lights those incense braziers, mm-hmm. and he's like, "Where is my heir?" or whatever. Yeah, and they like carve little statues of what's going to happen. Or but something he, they like don't that. carve them; they're just there. There, yeah. and that's why he gets so free. He's like, "I knew you were coming," because there's a little mouse on the wall. Yeah, and he's like, "Oh my god!" And Martin was bigger than all of his friends. Yeah, Gomp's just sitting there going like, "I'm not the main character, matey." <laughs> he's like, like, "Yeah, he's happy with yeah. it." I know I'm a sidekick, I'm and a friend. I also feel like when they finally fight all the rats, I'm like, "When has Gomp been like training to fight, or like the mole?" And they're gonna be like, "There's like seven of them against like apparently a thousand sea rats, just or like something? a ship full of sea rats." It's nuts. And Bore the fighter's just like, "Come on, I'll give you a hug." I know it's like hardcore. That it's like death brutal. by combat. Could you imagine death by rats? Ew. Ugh. That's like, unfortunately, I feel like too close to like what could actually happen to us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we live in Chicago. Yeah, there's rats yeah. everywhere. We could just be going down the wrong street and a couple of rats are just like. Look, I saw a rat swim the other day and I was just like, you are an advanced creature. Oh, no. <laughs> like you swam across you that saw puddle. rat swimming? Yeah. Chilled my very bones. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Okay, so then they once they watch Boar die, they go back and kind of everything gets kicked off and Sarmina is also slowly going mad yeah. the entire time, which, but I remember by the time I read like my 18th or however many, the got to the end of the Red Wall books, I was so tired of all the evil people going mad. Yeah. He loves to do that. They're, it's like, I think he wants to say that when you're evil, you're like inherently bad or you're going to go crazy. You don't have like a good grip on reality or mm-hmm. something. And the, yeah, it seems like he always wants to make it. So like the stoats and weasels and whatever, like the, the lesser, the, the more the, the um what's the word i'm looking for uh hen- all the, the hench- peons yeah all the henchmen mm-hmm. all the hench ferrets uh become like they kind of realize they're like you know what we didn't even want to be doing this the whole time like yeah it seems like the end of a lot of his books are that the the bad guys run away from their main mm-hmm. like bad from their boss being like you know what Fuck you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, you never shared any cheese with me. Yeah. Like, I hate you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there, there's, it's like every time he's like, they're not loyal, like, they're bad, like, blah, blah, blah. But it does get just boring mm-hmm. to have the, like, I, okay, like, I want to see Martin, like, actually kill Sarmina and she is not just crazy. She just, yeah. She's just, she's just evil. Well, they do have a big duel at the end. They do. I was happy with that. But she ends up, he's like, just, you know, almost dying, just watching her and go nuts. And she's just gone. Yeah, she she drowns herself on accident. Yeah. Or yeah. something like that. I yeah, but like she walks kind of, backwards into the water. She walks backwards in the water, but it's kind of also like she gets like swept away or whatever. Yeah. So she could, you know, in typical fashion, she could wash up on shore. And then, <laughs> oh, what do you know? There's evil Sarmina again. Yeah, totally. He left it open for a sequel or 15. I mean... But, like, Sarmita never comes back. No, 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 no. She doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> she's dead. Yeah, she's fully dead. But I got a little, like, my bloodthirsty 13-year-old self was like, okay, like, I want someone to die. Yeah. <laughs> On purpose, yeah. not by accident. Well, old uh, Fortunata gets just yeah. <laughs> pin-cushioned by the good guys. I guess I should have been satisfied by mm-hmm. Fortunata getting absolutely ripped apart. And Bane gets, oh, yeah. uh, fights to death with the eagle. Bane was kind of hot to me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. I was like... I, I also, whenever they write a fox in these books, they, Brian Jock, I think of um, Robin Hood cartoon. Oh, yeah. And, like, Fortunata is when Robin Hood dresses up as, like, as a, a girl. Yeah. <laughs> I'm or, like, girl fox is Disney character well, animation. The whole time it was in that Disney animation in my mind. It was completely, like, because of the series, there is a animated Redwall series. Yes, it's terrible. It's bad. But, but they're coming out with a new one. Really? On Netflix. No way. Yeah, dude. Animated? Yeah. I, I'm firing my agent. <laughs> you didn't get any calls for that? No, I don't have an agent either. <laughs> Dang, yeah, I was going to say, like, wait, you have an agent? Neither do I. Yeah. If any agents would like to rep us, <laughs> yeah. please. I can do a couple stout Let voices. us know. Yeah, he's got that down. Mm-hmm. I will play 
12 years old to 80. Mm-hmm. My <laughs> she could play a good hedgehog child. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I could be. I could be a Dibbon. What's the? What are the Gertie and uh, Gertie, Gertie and Boggs? Or yes, something. <laughs> they're just like the cute. They're so cute. Cogs, Ferdy and Cogs. Cogs, Ferdy, Cogs. Oh, so that <laughs> makes my. What are you doing, friend? <laughs> oh, oh, that feels so bad to hear in these headphones. <laughs> That's what it was like in the book. They're like, Uncle Gingerby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, our little, our gay uncle. Yeah. <laughs> the cat. For sure. <laughs> he's, he's got the hand. Yeah. He's doing the hand His thing. His name's Gingerbeer. Um, okay, other thought. <clears throat> Living in the Redwall world seems really brutal to me. Like, mm-hmm. the, over the, the course of the books, like, there's no society changes. They're just like you live your life until a sea rat makes you an ore slave or like yeah. you die. Or an eagle picks you off. Yeah, it's hardcore. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, I mean, it, he doesn't shy away. From, he's like, this is the animal kingdom. Like it is, there's still, everyone's out to kill each other it's and true. eat each other and all that kind of stuff. So. Okay, big question for you. Mm-hmm. Where are they getting all this milk from? They're always drinking milk. They're always having cream on their scones. It's so true. There's no big cows, huh? I just was like, what are they milking? Are they milking each other? <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm scared to know. It's a conspiracy. It's just like, you know, you're British. You got to have your cl- Have you ever had clotted cream? Mm-mm. It's so good. It's like illegal to sell in America because of like pasteurization laws or something. But right. it's like so good. And I British people love cream and love putting it on things. Mm-hmm. And so I feel like Brian Jocks was like building this world and was like, I'll never answer the cow question, mm-hmm. but they're always having cream on stuff. I mean, the conspiracy theory is just like, are they milking each other? <laughs> I'm going to go nuts on YouTube after yeah. this. <laughs> I'm just imagining within the world, there's a mouse being like, where does the milk come from? <laughs> yeah, like stuffing his face with it, but being like, I don't know, want to know. Yeah, yeah, it's badger milk. It's delicious. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's like kind of the only character that has like the 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 you know mass to support so Mm -hmm. much milk for Mm -hmm. everybody i know or like the foxes or something fox milk (laughs) (laughs) oh god yeah so i don't want to read the next book at all okay well i'm kidding (laughs) i read i read the original Redwall, and it's kind of funny because he does have random references to like the he's like Clooney, the big evil rat some say he was from Portugal, and it's like, okay, so Redwall is randomly by Portugal. Yeah. And got it. And then he's like, the town dog, or like a cow in a barn, like down the street. And yeah. It's, so there's like these allusions to the outside world, like almost like this is somehow coexisting with human. Do you think humans? they're all the same size, or they're all human sized, yeah. or are they like, is it actually mice sized thing? Because they crossed a mountain range and stuff like that. I feel like. I am happy never knowing the answer because yeah. to me, I think they're different sizes because in all the illustrations, mm-hmm. they're different sizes. Right, right, right. So I feel like, yeah, I feel like they, I feel like they're just different sizes, but like there's some sort of nebulousness we never need to like decide about because it's That makes it's Martin fantasy. the Warrior so much more badass than I know. Because he killed a, ma- killed a cat. I know. Do you think he was kind of doing some like reverse Tom and Jerry sort of commentary oh, yeah, here? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Very high brow. <laughs> What's his name? Is it Tom? Tom's Tom's the Tom. Jerry's the mouse. Jerry just turns around, <laughs> stabs him. I'm Jerry the warrior. Oh my god! <laughs> the crossover we've all been waiting for. Yeah. Uh, Redwall fans and people who like Tom and Jerry mm-hmm. who are now geriatric. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I feel like um, that's like kind of the question that's plagued me my whole life: the size question. Right. And I'm just like, you know what? I do they have thumbs? I think I have thumbs. Yeah. Like Look, I'm going to go nuts right now and just quote the Buddhist monk, Buddhist nun, excuse me, Pima Chodron. And mm-hmm. she has this quote where she's like, what's it like to sit on the razor's edge and of not being right and not being wrong? And that's like where I'm yeah. emotionally thinking <laughs> um, about the size of the Red Bull characters. <laughs> I'm perfectly fine being neither. I'm open. I'm in the middle. You're and at, I you're probably butchered peace. that. Yeah, I'm at peace. <laughs> I'm actually levitating right now. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. She's floating right now. Mm-hmm. You can't see it, but yeah, she's in full chakra, whatever, um, glowing. Yeah. Uh-huh. That's what you call it. Yeah. Her it, Mercury's in retrograde for sure. <laughs> and actually is in retrograde like next week. Really? Yeah, I read my horoscope yesterday. Okay, string me up on the cross. Mm-hmm. I will. <laughs> okay. okay. Oh, She's a witch. I'm a witch. Yeah. You guys should see my outfit. It's basically a witch. Um, yeah. I, what, what character would you be? Hmm. 
I mean, I think Gomp. Yeah, same. I mean, he's 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 a thief. But he steals food. <laughs> yeah, I know. I love that. They're like, he's the thief, and they're like, "There's literally only one place to steal from. Yeah. <laughs> there aren't any stores." And they, I like him. He's a full adult, and he plays pretend. Yeah, still all the time, mm-hmm. which I loved a lot. They were like, especially going from reading Joe Abercrombie, having the characters were like, and then we were playing in the woods. They're just like adults that play yeah. still. So Gomp for sure, or. Um, Skipper, the otter. Yeah, you love he's, the otters. He's a straight badass. They're so cool. And when they have the fish, they release like the pike yeah. to fight like the fucked up water rat. Mm-hmm. That was really cool too. Is it weird that for Skipper, I just pictured Dwayne the Rock Johnson? <laughs> <laughs> That's like so odd to me. It's a bunch of animals and then just kind of Dwayne the Rock Johnson. He's like so good at swimming. He's like, I'm an otter actually. I've cast myself as an otter. Wow, you, have you been working on your impressions? That's Kevin, good. Kevin Hart as <laughs> Martin the Warrior. <laughs> I'm mad in the warrior. Oh my god, I love that. I'm trying to think. Okay, Meryl Streep is Bella of Brock Hall, mm-hmm. <laughs> but yep. also Bore the Fighter. <laughs> oh yeah, she could do whatever. She could do both. And Sarmina. And Sarmina, yeah. yeah she's a very good actress. Yeah, I feel like she would be a good Sarmina. Who who would you be besides Gump? Because I already took that character. Okay, copy. rude, you can't, you rude, can't copy rude. Me. Okay, but here's coming up on uh, Claire's second big criticism after no sex of Brian Jocks is the girl character. He does such a terrible oh, job yeah. with the female characters, yeah. giving them active roles. I think like you know the hairs, the fighting hairs have women and or female hairs that are fighting and stuff like that, and um and like the Abbas and Bella are you know they're all the female characters I would say are fleshed out interesting characters. Like Lady Amber. Mm-hmm. She's a badass. Yeah, she's a badass. But in terms of main <clears throat> characters, he almost exclusively it's all includes men. men. Yeah. There's like a couple books where he has a female character later on. Mm-hmm. Um, and he also has like female character, female captains and things like that later on more too in, in the vermin hordes, which is fun. Right. Um, but I feel like, I mean, I don't know. Realistically, I'd probably be chill like living at the Brock Hall and like cooking my mysterious milk creations yeah. <laughs> like and but i don't know i think in this book i would being lady amber would be fun because you get to pal around with skipper and like execute foxes yeah, hell yeah and you've got like a bunch of squirrels following your every order the squirrels yeah. are badass yeah they're like in the trees firing bows and arrows and they're the hardcore. otters like pop up from the water and javelin people i know they're like a gorilla army i mean i want to live in the world so bad when i was a little kid Oh. These books, I was just like, I want to be a fucking squirrel. Like, <laughs> God damn it. I just imagine you going to your like little LARPing camp, and they're like, you can be a knight or a sorcerer. And you're like, no, I am a squirrel. <laughs> I'm Lady Amber's right-hand man. Yeah. <laughs> so you're like, I have invented my own character. Yeah. You will let me be this character. I'm a squirrel person. Moss flower. <laughs> Um, God, hearing you say squirrel person just makes me think of these people who say they're trans species and they're, it was like a Tumblr thing, I feel like. And Mm -hmm. I mean, it's been parodied so many times, but they're like, I am actually was meant to be a cat and that kind of thing. Yeah. The freaky, freaky people. They're not the same as furries, but like they're cousins sort of. It it seems like they want to fuck animals. Um, yeah. Bestiality excuse there. Oh, ew. Yeah. Yeah. Just maybe... We're probably saying some unwoke things, but I think bestiality is. Like, I, I'm keep, gonna cancel me for saying that bestiality is wrong. Yeah, but I'm okay saying it. I'll cancel me for that. No kink <laughs> shaming, unless you want to fuck animals. Yeah, in which case, get that's the fuck. you need help. Go yeah. fe- go to therapy. Yeah. Get go the to fuck to therapy. Yeah. I mean, I guess being a furry would be better. It was like whatever. You yeah. Know? At least you're fucking consenting adults that are uh, yeah. dressed up like animals that's okay look if we the woke discourse will have gone too far if we're embracing bestiality mm-hmm. I'm, I'm okay to say that yeah i think yeah <laughs> we get a call from joe rogan to be on his podcast and we're like no no, no we've no, gone too far we've gone too never far mind, never backtrack mind. backtrack you can have sex with the dog never, <laughs> we never, don't want to be on his podcast never mind never mind never mind oh oh i like so this was fun i saw this in your notes you said challenge chris force chris to do <laughs> entire episode in mole speak well, so in Molespeak in the um, in the books was just a heavy Scottish accent. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. He was just like, I know a way to get out of this problem, my friends. That like, makes so much more sense than the way he... Well, he, the way he writes it, when I picked it up, that was part of the reason I did the book on tape. I was mm. like, oh my fuck. He just, you have to take a second to be like, what did this person say? What did this of, mole say? Instead of over, it will be O, two apostrophes, and then an ER. Mm-hmm. It's like, or... Yeah, I think I glazed over them as a kid reading it. I was just like, 
They talk like hoard the globe. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, like, well, the moles aren't really contributing much. <laughs> <laughs> they show up and they dig. Oh, the moles are just speaking fucking nonsense over there. <laughs> they say her a lot. Yeah, her, 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 her. And yeah. they eat. I, well, okay. When I I think about <laughs> the mole like dish, which is. What is it? Turnip and tater and beetroot pie. Mm-hmm. Deeper and ever pie. Mm-hmm. As a kid, I was like, that is deep dish pizza of Redwall. Oh, that's tight. <laughs> that's tight. And then reading it, I'm like, oh, wait, it's beets and potatoes. Like, I don't want to eat that. Mm-mm. Just potatoes, please. And then the um, otter food is like spicy. Oh, my God. I want to eat that. Yeah, that seems good. Um, Hot, hot root soup with yeah. shrimp. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds really good, to be honest. Um, yeah. No, it was just... I'm. I really, 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 really am excited to read the next book, which uh, is Tagarung. Coolest word yeah. he's ever come up with. Yeah, it's really cool. And Tagarung is like it's like a prophecy type of deal, and we kind of mm-hmm. you see more of like the bad guys and stuff, and that's really as, he does a moral universe. He changes up his moral universe a little bit. Yeah, which he is does. Cool. He does for sure. Um, and that's our next book. And that's right? our next book. Yeah. Look, do you think we? Do you think we? want to play marry fuck kill with animals or are we going to grandstand on how um Hmm. we don't want to fuck any animals i think we should say we're not going to have we're this was an anti-animal sex podcast and Mm -hmm. and call it yeah yeah maybe just marry and kill yeah okay kill the rats kill the rat kill sarmina obviously (laughs) yeah kill sarmina and then marry um what's her name the mom hedgehog oh my gosh Um, goody goody yeah yeah, her yes. name was Goody. Her name's Goody. Yeah. yeah, I'm gonna marry Goody because I love food and I want some of her special pies. Okay, I want to marry Skipper because I feel like um, he's kind of hot to me. Yeah, Dwayne the Rock Johnson's really hot. Oh my god! Oh yeah. Okay, in my head, I'm marrying Dwayne the Rock, Dwayne the Rock Johnson. Um, okay, cool. We'll we'll see you guys on the next episode. Yeah, and big big shout out to the Lincoln Lodge where we record every week, every single week, and they have shows here five night no seven nights a week. Sorry, I don't know why I said five five when I said it was the as many numbers of days in the week. There Absolutely are. crushing the promo. Mm-hmm. All right. Anyway, <clears throat> at the Lincoln Lodge. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we're at the Lincoln Lodge. We love it here. And um, yeah, come on come on out to live shows here. I almost made a whole episode without hitting the goddamn yes. mic. We made a whole episode and Claire had to get <laughs> had to get one little mic headbutt in. Okay, good night. We love you. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs>